So this is my first attempt at buying a micro brand. Um, and as you can see, it's a, uh, a Zelos. Now it's almost impossible to talk about uh, Zelos without mentioning um, the CEO, Elshan Tang. Uh, he is um, synonymous for being extraordinarily good uh, to deal with uh, in terms of if people do experience any problems with their watches. Um, also, he's extremely active um, on the Facebook group and he's getting, uh, well, he's got just as strong a following as the watches themselves and obviously he's the reason uh, for that. Um, I did have an opportunity to experience some of that in my buying um, experience as well. Uh, he's been absolutely fantastic throughout uh, and I can understand why people uh, really do like him. So when people buy Zelos watches, they're not really just buying the watch, which clearly that's what you get, but you're also buying into him. Um, and usually as well, these watches seem to retain their value, unlike most micro brands. So if you do buy one and don't like it, um, or don't get on with it, or want to change it, the chances are you'll get the majority, if not all, of your, uh, your money back. So it really is an interesting uh, brand, uh, and they do uh, some very interesting watches. Um, so buying this watch, I, as I say, I was doing lots of research into different watches, mainly Baltic actually at the time, the Aquascath, and I was waiting for the GMT. Um, I've been looking for a white dial watch for some time. Um, I have tried on and intended to buy the Rolex Explorer 2 uh, probably three or four times over the last five years, but it always just felt too big on my wrist. Just proportionally, it's actually very good. And when you look at the dimensions on paper, it looks very good. But in reality, it just looked too big on my wrist for my tastes. Um, so <clears throat> on the TZ forums, shout out to them if anyone from here is uh, a member. Um, someone mentioned Zelos, went and have a look. Uh, sorry, had a look. Uh, and looking at white dials, this and a swordfish came up. Um, I messaged uh, Zelos, which I'm assuming is Elshan, um, over... Um, Facebook Messenger, um, asking if they would get these back in. He said they were they were sold out, so they, were, they wasn't they weren't going to come back in. But just obviously keep an eye out because there are lots of drops for new watches uh, all the time uh, from Zelos. That's just the way they operate. They do a run, uh, they finish those, and then they tweak and do another run and so on. I kept an eye on the website, just looking on, and then one of these became available. I put it in my basket. Went to go talk to my wife about it, and by the time I was ready to pull the trigger later that day, it had already sold. So I got in touch with um, Elshan again, uh, and he said he might have one hanging around, and lo and behold, this was the one. Um, on the journey here, using FedEx, it got stuck in China for five days. That was fun. Um, mentioned it on the Zelos Facebook group, and again, Elshan replied, and I didn't direct my message towards him, uh, just airing my frustration as people do, just you know, looking forward to it, and it's stuck in China for five days. Um, and he instantly came back on, well, within a couple of hours and just said he'll chase up FedEx and if they have lost it, he'll send me out a new one. Um, so what they obviously do is keep some back for warranty work, uh, spares and repairs type stuff. Um, but I'd imagine don't want to get rid of all of them. So again, massive thumbs up uh, from a customer service point of view uh, for Elshan. Uh, I also wanted to order this class, which I'll come on to later. Um, because this watch doesn't come with this clasp, it comes with this horrible thing, which I'll come on to. Um, and again, he was able to say that while he didn't have one in stock, he would look to get me one uh, sent across. I ended up buying it from someone in the UK in the end, just so I could get the strap and the clasp and have some extra links in case I ever wanted them. But the price of that clasp, just that clasp, $30. $30, that is a milled stainless steel micro adjusting clasp for thirty dollars absolutely incredible um so yeah uh, very good customer service and uh, my experience uh, of buying this watch really did reflect everything that i'd heard and read um about elshan and the, the zelos brand so we'll come on to some of my impressions because this is my first watch uh, of this price point I do have a Longines, which was around a thousand pounds. And then I've got a couple of Tudors, modern Tudors and a um, modern uh, Amiga. So this was all quite new and quite enjoyable um, researching and a bit of an experiment buying this watch to see what I thought of it. 
Um, I'll try not to mention too much that this is good value for money, but ultimately it is, and I will mention that a few times. That, that's unavoidable given what this watch offers from a, a specs point of view and just how much it costs. So apologies if that, if that comes up quite a bit, but it, it's because it's true. So we'll do the negatives first, and then we'll talk about the rest. So I did notice that the crown, well, you can see that, it is quite wobbly. I don't know if that's normal for these watches or not, but that is a fair bit of play in it. It actually works and screws in and everything works fine, but it's um, it's quite wobbly. Um, also, I won't be able to pick this up on my iPhone, but there was a very small hair underneath the dial. Um, I can't see it now, but it is there. It just moves around, um, which was frustrating. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is, I'm, I'm not going to send it back to Singapore. I'm just going to take it to a local watchmaker to see if they can do anything just to make that a bit more solid. Um, and also just pop off the crystal and remove the hair from underneath uh, the uh, the sapphire crystal because that's just just a bit frustrating. Um, the clasp that came with the watch, I think it's horrific. <laughs> I've seen people review it and say it's really good, but um, again, maybe it's a price point thing and I'm just not used to handling these types of clasps. Um, but it, I, I think it's pretty poor. So obviously you do get lots of micro adjustment, which is good. Um, but I mean, look at that. Um, it just doesn't feel very nice to use. Again, it's stainless steel, it's milled, which is nice. This bit, that element of closing that is fine. No problems with that really, that's okay. But this is just a bit, a bit pants. And it just doesn't really fit with the overall aesthetic of the watch. You know, it's quite a clunky, uh, diver's style when you compare it to that it's a far far nicer uh, looking clasp and it, it's all a part of the evolution of the watches and the feedback um, that Elshan gets and then putting that into the, the new models and again we'll come on to the fact that that clasp has already been replaced um, I'm just trying to think if there was anything else I think that's probably it for the negatives um, I've got some observations which I'll go through as well but from a negative point of view, that, that's, that's mainly it. As a package, it's, it's ridiculous value. Uh, it really is, you get, obviously you get the watch. Um, everyone will be familiar with this who's seen these types of reviews. You get um, a watch roll, which is nicely made. It's very, very soft in here, so it really will protect your watch as well. Um, when you put them in there, uh, you get a rubber strap with the Zelos, or Zelos, the way I say it, uh, branding on the buckle, which is nice. And you get a metal uh, warranty card, which again is nice, and it gives you the number. So mine was 008, I think it was out of 100. Um, but it's usable, this is the point, right? This isn't just a random knickknack like when you get some of the Omega um, Moon watches and you get a stand for it, but you're not really going to use it. It's a really usable extra. Um, and again, the watch box is a usable extra, so you get this watch box, wooden. Couple of magnetic points down here, but you can repurpose that for whatever you like. So again, some really good extras um, that come with the watch, uh, which I knew about because obviously I've been doing the research. But just uh, really nice to get them. Um, sorry, bear with me one second. Okay, so specifications of the watch. I'm sure you'll all be aware of them. They're actually really well called out and very clear um, on the Zelos website, which I do like, because you go on to some very premium watch sites and they don't give you uh, the lug width, they might not give you the true height uh, or any height at all. They don't really give you all the specifications that you're looking for. And while I agree you shouldn't shop on specifications alone, at least it gives you an idea. Like not all of us are going to want a 44 millimeter watch or a 38 millimeter watch. So at least you can shop within what you think is your ideal uh, sizes. So I will just reel them off quickly. So it's a 13 and a half millimeter height. That includes two and a half millimeters of the uh, crystal. It's 40 millimeters from uh, in diameter, but actually the case is a little bit bigger. So it's 38 and a half millimeters for the bezel. So it wears more like a 39, 38 and a half uh, millimeter watch. It's 45 millimeters lug to lug, but with the protruding uh, male link there, it's more like 47, maybe even 48. Uh, lug to lug and then 20 millimeters between 
uh, the lugs. So again, nice and usable for putting lots of different straps on. Uh, this is where the spec gets super impressive. Uh, sapphire crystal on the front. We'll come to the sapphire crystal on the back shortly. Uh, fully loomed uh, bezel and dial, uh, sapphire uh, covered uh, bezel as well, 48 click um, uni, sorry, bi-directional bezel, so really, really good for GMT, uh, telling, uh, telling different time zones, got there eventually, you can see there you've got the additional time zones uh, on the chapter ring but also on the bezel, so you can tell three different time zones with this watch. Uh, the loom is BG uh, W1 and C3X1, so pretty much as good as it gets. The whole watch is made of uh, 316 uh, L steel, which is the same as companies like Tudor and other companies. Uh, the movement, which we'll show you now, is a, uh, a Labor, a Labore, something like that, uh, ETA 2893-2, uh, which is the highest spec of that movement from ETA. Um, and what is really nice is they stopped producing um, these movements with the uh, decoration, so you can see the perlage on there, uh, and some other decoration on that movement. Uh, they stopped doing that, uh, which is a real shame because the whole point of an exhibition case back is to see that detail and watch geeks really enjoy that and I think it's brilliant. Even my daughter likes looking at that. Um, a custom gold-plated rotor, uh, you can see there with a globe um, laser etched onto it. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased I've managed to get one with the decorated movement. Really, really pleased about that. Um, 200 meters water resistance. Uh, so you can not only use it at GMT, it's a diver, uh, a signed crown. Um, and obviously uh, a fully milled stainless steel clasp, and I'll come on to that in a second as well. So really, really high spec for a watch that cost $900 or $899 and cost me about £750 uh, with import duties uh, and also buying that glass, $750-$760. Um, the dial is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's really what drew me to the watch. As I said earlier, I was looking for a Rolex Explorer 2 Polar, but it was, I just couldn't ever get on with the size, no matter how many times I tried it on. That white is just fantastic. Um, the applied markers are finished very well. I don't have um, a loop at the moment, so I am going to get one just to get a bit closer and compare it to my other watches, but to the naked eye, the application of those applied indices is brilliant. Uh, the hands that need to go all the way to the edge, making it very easy uh, to read the time. The application of the Zelos logo is uh, very nice indeed. It's a fully loomed uh, dial um, and uh, bezel and it's very legible because it's black and white and then white on black. It's very legible um, in both uh, light and dark conditions and I will put in a loom shot just to show that. Um, and it's just a really nice, really nice dial. Uh, I like the orange details a lot. I'm not quite sure why a 200 meters is red. Um, you would think that would be orange to match everything else, but it's not the end of the world. Everything lines up as well. So bear in mind, look, you've got a 20 on the bezel, 20 on chapter ring, and then you've got the applied hour marker as well. That could easily go wrong. Um, so the attention to detail when producing uh, that dial really is exemplary. Uh, it's very, very well done indeed. I'm not sure about anti-reflective coating. I mean, you can see some reflection there. Um, but yeah, the box crystal, two and a half millimetres tall. Look at that. Look at the distortion you get. And that won't be to everyone's taste, but oh, I do like that. I think it looks fantastic. It's a really, really good looking watch. I'm so pleased with this. Um, The only thing I will say is there is a little bit of play in the bezel, so you can see that it's a ball bearing bezel action apparently. Not entirely sure what other bezel actions are, but you can see this is a very, very small amount of play. But I think that's quite acceptable. Uh, again, given the price of the watch, it's um, quite stiff to turn, but not to the point where it's going to cause you loads of problems. Uh, once you've done it a few times, it's fine. Uh, the coin edging here gives you more than enough grip. Um, 
so yeah it's it's a fantastic dial really really uh pleased with pretty much every element about it it's really good to look at the case is even better flip and act the case is good so you've got your polishing up here on the chamfered edges and then you've got some look at that the brush uh finish here on the side of the case and the shaping of the case is just fantastic uh, and even with the uh, end links here it doesn't stick out too far because it's quite a short watch already anyway um it's not uh too top heavy so for example the, the tudors are especially the black bay 41 range are criticized for having a slab sided look but you've got a good distribution of uh, bezel dial side of the case and even on the edge that polished chamfer goes all the way down to the edge and you can see the brushing goes up there as well you don't have to do that it's it's an extra detail the case is probably one of the outstanding features that this whole unit is the outstanding feature of the watch really um yeah it's brilliant um i will show you very quickly so this is my longine which cost about 1100 quid um look at that you know there's no chamfer there it's just brush on the top polish on the side it's got no way near the level of detail that's gone into it um i think this is a far superior case uh, than this longine um the bracelet and clasp this is probably the weak point of the watch while it's good um you can hear it's quite rattly there um it doesn't take any of my hair and i have quite a lot of hair um it doesn't ever pinch that's my seven inch wrist, the watch on my seven inch wrist. I absolutely love that size. I think it's fantastic. Really looks good for me. But yeah, it doesn't pinch at all. Um, so that's good. It just, I don't know, it does not articulate that well. So on my Tudors, for example, they do fold back on themselves a little bit more. So you do have that little bit more flexibility um, with the links than you do with this. It is a very, very comfortable watch, but you can just feel it's just not it's not quite up there, and I wouldn't expect it to be up there with a Tudor, obviously, but you can just feel that it's not quite there. Um, but what is nice is you do have this polished bit on top of the um, bracelet here on the edges, which is really good, um, and it's not sharp, right? It, it doesn't uh, dig into you. It doesn't feel like it's going to be uncomfortable. It's very smooth, actually. So it, it is a well-made bracelet, but you can just tell the difference between this and obviously watches five times the cost, obviously. Um, but yeah, it, it's more than adequate. I like the fact you get screws here. It makes it very, very easy to size. I will say that do just check your screws because a few of these are quite loose and I did just have to tighten them up with my screwdriver um, from the factory. So do just check these if you do get them, but I definitely prefer that to pin and collar. It makes it very easy to size. The clasp is, is, is honestly, again, for the price, it's absolutely brilliant. I handled a Oris Aquis and I swear this is just as good as that clasp. Um, I'm sure it's not quite because I only handled it for a couple of minutes, I don't know, eight, nine months ago, but it doesn't feel that much different to me. A twin trigger um, deployant, nice thick milled steel, very little wiggle room in it at all. Um, and the thing that really makes this bracelet so comfortable is this uh, micro adjust in here. So that lever, you put your nail in, pull it out, and you've got four micro adjustment spots. And that has enabled me to get an absolutely perfect fit with this watch. Biggest complaint about Tudor, um, sort yourselves out. On your popular models, your, your Black Bay range, your divers especially, put a, a, a micro adjuster like that on, even like this. You know, you've got it on your Pelagos, put it on your, uh, your Black Bay range. Um, so absolutely, I've got to be honest, a very, very good clasp. The only negatives are this bit's quite sharp, it gets mentioned quite a lot. And I'm not convinced about this kind of bead blasted effect in the middle. The new clasp um, has that smoothed out considerably uh, and that is brushed. And I think that goes far better with the aesthetic of the watch because not only is it smoothed out, so it's a bit more comfortable, but the brushing continues all the way along um, and just makes it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Although I've got to be honest, it's a fantastic looking clasp, especially compared to this. Um, the twin trigger deployment is very safe. It's not going anywhere with either or, it has to do them both. And it's a very nice secure click um, when you close it down. So again, 
very very comfortable really pleased with it for the money it's absolutely incredible um so what are the conclusions i've blabbled on enough it's brilliant um has it sold me on my <clears throat> on micro brands um i'm not a hundred percent sure the way i kind of see it is if i'm going to spend 700 750 quid on a watch like this and then potentially get three of them I'd rather probably just put that money aside and buy um, maybe certainly more expensive. But what it does offer is an unbeatable amount of quality um, for the price of the watch. Yeah, I, I could not believe the specification of this when I read it on their website. Um, I've had the, I haven't had a lot watch long enough to keep um, track of exactly how well the timing works on this movement and this isn't anything to do with Alshan anyway but at the moment over 24 hours it was 1.7 seconds a day and that was worn during the day and then just dial up at night time so the movement even at the moment is performing far better than I thought it would um yeah the only main difference you, you, you do feel difference obviously when you move up the price brackets but you'd expect to um oh, but it is brilliant I've got to be honest I would buy would I buy another one from Zealous? I probably would. I probably would. If I like the design, it all comes down to the design, right? If you like the design and you're sold on that, you know you've got someone like Elshan who backs the watches as well as he does, and you know they're going to come out with this kind of quality. Um, I'll probably just backtrack there, but I probably would buy uh, another one of these, to be honest. Um, I really am blown away with it. Uh, it's an incredible watch. It gives me some more variety to my collection because I don't have any white dials in there at all. Um, so, yeah. Maybe, maybe I would buy another one. <laughs> uh, so I would I would encourage people who are into collecting watches, not just to um, gloss over these types of brands, really do look at the spec sheets and, and look at the prices and obviously read about um, the customer service and look at the whole, the brand as a whole. Um, it, it's, it's a really nice thing. It's a really nice thing. Uh, waffling on too much now. Um, okay, if you have any questions, obviously more than happy to try and answer anything. Uh, the Facebook group is brilliant, so please do join there if you're interested in this brand or is this a, if this has sparked any kind of interest, because it is well worth your time. Okay, thank you very much.